In 1928, three men had a dream to bring semi-professional football to upstate New York. On October 14, 1928, William Engelson, Fred Burns, and Francis Moynihan debuted the Hudson Falls Green Jackets to the community at Derby Park in Hudson Falls. The Jackets would go on to win their first game 2 to nothing against Saratoga. They would go on to finish their first year with five wins, zero losses, and one tie against the Albany Knickerbockers. After calling Derby Park home for 50 plus years, the Jackets now play their home games at East Field where they continue to deliver great football and family entertainment 86 years later. As a player, you, you just see Green Jackets. You see Green Jackets in the teams that you play. You don't think of how old the team is. Um, you feel a, a bigger pride knowing that you played on a team that is that old, that's been around since 1928. But um, the, the bigger picture is is that you don't really realize it until you're inducted into like a Hall of Fame. Um, and I carry that over as, as the president and CEO. It's the same thing. Yeah, you know what? You, you, you feel like you're King Kong and you're tapping your chest because you're sitting there and you're saying, yeah, I own the second oldest football team in the country in semi-pro. In all football, basically, we were the second oldest team still active. Um, the the big thing is, is you don't like I said, the, back to the Hall of Fame part, is that you don't really realize it until you go to one of these functions. When we went out to uh, Sean, Brand and I were inducted together, and you know Sean and I were, were best friends, played Green Jacks together. He's the one that got me to go and play for the team. Well, we were both inducted together. Uh, we went out to Mesquite, Nevada, and got inducted. Um, there were 350 people there from all over the world that were inducted from New Zealand, from England, from Russia. I mean, there were people. I mean, it's American football is is growing in 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 Europe and all over the world. But you don't really realize it until somebody comes up to you and says, after you're, they hear that you're a green jacket, you were a green jacket football player. Watertown Red and Black, same way. You go up and they want to shake your hand, they want to talk to you about the history and things like that. It is in your best interest when you are somebody of stature like that to know the history of your team because you're going to be asked. I look at running the team as a business, number one. Um, and number two, as a former player, my passion and my love for the team. I mean, I grew up watching the Green Jackets back in the... 70s and 80s as a kid growing up at Hudson Falls and uh, I always said I was going to do something I was going to play jackets so you know most kids dream about going to NFL I my thing was I when I was younger I wanted to play for the Green Jackets and I've done that and I fulfilled my obligation to that but um, I mean as far as uh, you know I still take it you know I still have the shoulder pads and, and helmets that I keep in my office and you know if, if I ever have the so said desire to go out and suit up and practice in my mind of my mind of mind is I can do that uh, as my family would have other issues with it you know, they, I'm when I'm 48 years old and uh, you know I find out that my body doesn't handle the, the shots like it used to The Green Jackets at that time uh, were under new ownership. We wound up going into what was called the New York Amateur Football League. Um, we had gone in there and we wound up going to play the Buffalo Gladiators that year. Um, you know, I it, there's a lot of turmoil be, behind that that game and everything else, so it never really got resolved. But we went on to play in uh, the Harvest Bowl, and we wound up playing Marble Shamrocks, which was the number one team in the nation at that time. They were big. Um, we refer to that as the Mud Bowl. Uh, five guys that were up on the front line. We played the entire year, and uh, you know the guy, the quarterbacks and running backs and everything else. I mean, you know, I, I can tell you who was there, what we did. I can tell you things that were on halftime that probably aren't family friendly, but I could could tell you um, if it was <laughs> depending on what you rated a a film. But it was it it is. Um, there's a lot of memories. There's a lot of memories of it. And the thing is, is that uh, going into the regional championship when the Green Jackets were in part of the uh, NAFL, the North American Football League, um, 
as the president and CEO or co-owner of the team at that time, um, there was no difference. You still have that passion. You still have that fire. You still feel like you can walk out on that field and throw the shoulder pads on and helmets. But the thing is, the, the only difference is, is that you play through your players. Um, you know, I've, I've done it a lot of times. I've, I've sat there and, you know, go up and said, listen, if he does this, you do this. It's just taking your your passion for the game and passing it on, basically passing the torch to the next person, finding somebody that has that passion and that drive like you used to have. The, you know, and again, you know, you, these are all viable questions. These are things that, you know, everybody thinks about. Um, and I can honestly say that the one thing about it is the history, the legacy of the team, and because the team is comprised mainly of local athletes from local high schools that either go to ACC or SUNY Adirondack now, and they go there, they don't have a football program. So I look at us as a viable option for anybody that goes to SUNY Adirondack to come in and utilize our football team. We're trying to work out a partnership with them right now, but it's built up of local athletes. And the thing is, is that a lot of those guys that played, like guys that played with me, there's at least nine or ten of them that are either athletic directors or football head football coaches at local high schools within a 50-mile radius. I'm just the president and CEO. Okay. I have a group of people, a staff, as I say. Um, more, of, We're more of a family than we are anything, players, staff, everybody included. Um, and without those staff members, Nothing would be what it is today. And yes, there has been an incline or an increase in attendance to the games. People are starting to find out that the, the games are becoming more and more fun to come to. Make it more family friendly. Kids are there. There's no alcohol. Um, we have looked at that. We did try that one year. It didn't work out very well. Um, but the thing is, is that, yes, I have seen an increase in it. And without the people that I have around me, the volunteers that help me do this, we wouldn't have any of it. We give the, a person the opportunity to take that and show other people that we do have talent in football in the area. Um, what I have done as president and CEO over the last couple of years is gotten in contact with arena football teams, which they didn't have a lot of when I was playing. Um, some of the scout, there's like a lot of, there's a ton of scouting combines out there, people that run combines for, for NFL scouts, for arena, for colleges. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we put them in the right direction for that. We've got one right now that's got a shot going. He's looking at four teams. There's four NFL teams that are looking at 6'8", 330 pounds. Uh, and he's from Hudson Falls. Uh, Dave Brummagen um, from Hudson Falls went on kick for the University of Nebraska. He's now a football coach, and he's coached other teams. He's, um, he's coaching the Lincoln Haymakers Arena football team. So we have the connections to do all that. And because we don't pay our players, um, you know, uh, they are eligible for some college. They can go and play college football. It doesn't hurt their eligibility. Uh, Juco College, I think they say if they do, they lose like one year or something like that or two years for every year that they play. But, you know, that's, that's coach being picky as far as I'm concerned. We have right now... Um, with not everyone here, we have 63 players that are signed up that have been to practice and ready to go. Um, we probably got about another 10 or 15. So there will be guys that will be asked to uh, be at practice, kind of like a practice squad, um, and just say, look at, you know, this is the deal. We're going to go with these guys. Um, we'd like to have you on as a practice squad member. If something gets somebody gets hurt, can't we'll suit you up. It's just like the NFL does. That's what they do. They have a practice squad. Um, but you know, as far as the talent pool, I mean, this year, knock on wood, is uh, is looking very good, very prosperous.